Welcome back to the History of Rock. His name is Brandon. He's the DJ. His name is Shim. He's the rock star, and he's the rock star that just moved houses. Hence the reason yeah. if you're watching this episode of the History of Rock, uh, things obviously look a bit different. Shim just got a window behind him with the blinds closed. With the worst fucking shade that you've ever... <laughs> the, worst, the worst shade that money can buy in a rental property. <laughs> I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Don't worry. But... That's why things are looking a little bit different. Also, um, I know we didn't do any songs in part two of Alice in Chains. Obviously, uh, we were kind of thrown off when we found that the the episode stopped recording like six minutes in. Um, nah, so that was a little that wrench that was thrown in there. That'll Shim, do it. That'll do it. Shim doesn't have the full setup yet, so we're not going to be able to do any songs for this episode either. But this episode, we're not covering one specific album. It's kind of what we've done here on the History of Rock so far is that we do two parts where we deep dive into an album, the songs, and kind of everything leading up to it. For this episode, we're just covering Green River. Now, if you've tuned into the previous episodes of the History of Rock, you've heard of Green River, you know who Green River is. Um, And we're going to get to all this here in a minute. But one of the things that we did with part two of Alice in Chains is Shim told me, pick whatever three songs you want for for the playlist. Like Shim yeah. hates Alice in Chains. He and doesn't understand you. why they're the. He doesn't understand <laughs> why they were big. Dude, he actually, I've you know met, what? I was, this is the thing that bothers me. I've played with Alice in Chains. I met them. I hung out with them. Not we're not friends. Just met them a couple of times. They were very nice guys. If they ever stumble upon this, because we, they're gonna think I shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Shim doesn't actually hate them. It's just not his thing. Because I, w- I was going to actually ask you this, because one of the things that you had referenced in regards to Alice in Chains is, was like the heroin use and things like that and the subject matter of the songs. Yeah. Do you think if they were singing about... <clears throat> uh, because, I mean, even on the album Daffodils. Dirt, some, well, some of it was about heroin, but like the song yeah. Rooster was not... Uh, the song Wood was actually a tribute song to Andrew Wood lead singer of Mother Love Bone. Do you think if they focused on other subject matter, you might have... Um, received them a little bit better. No, um, only because they sound like heroin. I didn't say that they talk about heroin. Ah. I said they sound like heroin. And they do sound like heroin. And that's what's great about them. And this is the thing, if Brandon would remember shit correctly, what I actually said was they're an amazing band that I have a massive amount of respect for because they Did make it? you feel like you're in that druggy, dirty, grimy, heroin state. And it's kind of euphoric and it's like, it, but it, it's it's not my drug of choice. It's not where I want to go because it, it, it emotionally charges you. That's what good music does. It makes you feel different. And that music doesn't make me feel the way I want to feel. So I don't listen to that band, but they did it so well that it actually made. And that's the thing. If when I make music, if someone comes up and says, I don't like these songs, I'm like, why? They don't make me feel good. I just feel angry afterwards. Or I just feel sad afterwards. I'm like, good. Then I did my job. You don't like made them. you feel made him feel something. Yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Well, because see, that's the like thing him. for don't me. Don't listen to him. That's the thing for that's me. That's why with Alice if, Chains. If anyone anyone watching says to me, "Don't listen to Alice in Chains." The only reason it's coming up is because we're doing a podcast yeah. about Alice in Chains, and Brandon asked me. I would never walk in a room and say, you "Fucking Alice in Chains." That's <laughs> so like. <laughs> so well, yeah, so because that's the thing with me with Alice in Chains. Um, like you were saying, how it kind of takes you to makes you almost feel like you're on heroin. Now, I've yeah. never actually done heroin before, um, but. There's something about it was with with Lane Staley's voice and Jerry Cantrell's voice and the guitars and the way that everything was put together. It actually it, it, it's music that calms me. It's I mean mm. it's 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 I, I could have a lot of anxiety going on. I have you know my mind's going a million miles an hour. <laughs> and it was another reason why I really liked Mad Season. That's another album that will in a band we'll have to get to where it was kind of a super group with Lane Staley on vocals. There was just something about that where for me it's it's calming and. Um, I was even on the phone you know what, with. You what? know what else is calming? What? Heroin. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was even job. on the phone. I was even on the phone with my mom today. We were talking about it because she because we're recording this the Monday that the Alice in Chains Part Two dropped, and she was talking to me about it. And I told her flat out, I was like, "This is an album that I could listen to front to back. Over, it might be one of my top five albums of all time." But obviously, as we covered in the previous episodes, wasn't quite Shim's jam. Now, we're really getting into a band here that not a lot of people are going to know, which is kind of how we started this podcast with Mother Love Bone. I think a lot of people knew the name Mother Love Bone just because it's kind of a funny name um, and it gets linked to grunge a lot. But I don't think a lot of people knew who Mother Love Bone was in the sense of who was in the band and also what their songs were. But we're going back to kind of 
before grunge was really an actual thing here with Green River, because as we covered it in Mother Love Bone and Temple of the Dog, um, the first time, at least that we've been able to find that the, the word grunge is on record was from the 1987 sub-pop release of Green River's second EP, Dry as a Bone, which I believe that the album that's right above me, if you're watching this, that is the album cover for Dry as a Bone, and where they described it as ultra-loose grunge that destroyed the morals of a generation. And that's really the first time you really kind of you kind of see the word grunge in there. Um, also, a couple of teases here for not this episode, but the uh, part two of Green River is that there's a Jane's Addiction connection in here. That we're gonna have, like, we're gonna have to cover Jane's Addiction. Like, they're, they're, we're gonna have to cover their album. At this point, we're gonna have to. Why? I've got people Why? arguing with me on YouTube <laughs> about how amazing they were, and it's like, dude, I just I saw them the because one time in New Orleans, one thing and they we suck. Said? Yeah. Did, did I? Did, did you said you hate Jane's Addiction? Did I say I don't like him as well? Did I? Did I say? Well, you no, anything? you said. I can't you, remember. <laughs> you said. Well, no, see, I do pay attention. <laughs> so you said that you. <laughs> You 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 liked them. You just never quite understood why they were so big. I didn't dislike them. Yeah, yeah. And, fr- and quite frankly, for me, I still listen to some of their songs. It's just that one performance was just so bad. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna have that coming up in part two. Also, I went back to around the time frame where Green River's album was released, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit was released. So that's gonna be our uh, on this date. That we're going to get to in part two, but my real quick question is: Did Who Framed Roger Rabbit even really make it down in Australia? Do you oh, remember that? As a kid? I used to watch the shit out of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It was the first times that I saw Bob Hoskins. I didn't know who he was at first, yep. <clears throat> and then I was so glad when he became a Super Mario, and so upset when the movie Super Mario sucked. sucked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, but no, I I learned all. I, I I haven't watched it for so long, but there was so many great adult innuendo oh jokes God. in that that I didn't get when I was a kid. That you get now. You know. Yeah. I gotta watch I it. Loved. I gotta watch it. I think we've watched it with my kid. I think she's seen it, but we gotta watch it again. Because there's yeah. another part in there. Remember I, again, I don't want to go too far into this, but the scene with uh We haven't even started talking yeah, about Yeah, I know, I know. Like we're we're minutes seven minutes into this episode. <laughs> we haven't even started to talk about Green River. But uh, in reference to, to uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the a shave and the haircut I was about to say the same thing. I was about to say the same thing. I didn't know what that was until I saw the movie. I didn't either. And I also didn't realize <laughs> that either it's it, it's either in like Mexican culture or just my wife's family. That means something yeah. awful. Like the da, 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 And we're going to get to that. killing someone, right? Uh, okay, we'll, well get I'll get to it. it I'll get to it. I'll get to it in the next episode. But anyway, we need to get to <laughs> okay. Green River here. So they were a band that uh, formed in Seattle. They would eventually break up, and they would kind of create two of the biggest grunge acts of all time, and that would be Mud Huddy <sighs> and then, of course, Pearl Jam. And now, like I mentioned, we're not covering one particular album. We're really just covering Green River in general. Uh, again, not to be confused with the Creedence Clearwater Revival song and or album, by the way, but the band existed from about 1984 to 1988. They did play some stuff together in 1993, and then they also kind of reunited in 2008 for some more stuff. You had Mark Arm on vocals, Steve Turner on guitar, Alex Vincent was on drums, Jeff Ament was bass, Stone Gossard was guitar. Of course, those two names are really big because they're the ones that went on for Pearl Jam, and Bruce Fairweather was on guitar as well. So the first thing here is we're going to talk about the formation of the band. Mark Arm first entered the Seattle rock scene back in 1980, forming his first band called Mr. Epp and the Calculations. They recorded their first song called The Pigeon in the Fountain, which caused local DJ Stephen Raybow to declare them, quote, the worst band in the world. It's a fantastic review. <laughs> well, now, fantastic but if, review. But if you read your next one, there might be some confusion, actually, about who said that they were the worst band in the world. Okay, is that is that because it was written incorrectly or it actually has been done? That's- I've, <clears throat> I've, I've seen... I've seen it related it's been to said different. Twice. Yeah, by, so by th- enough people of said. So it's the next one, Steve Turner had a band called the Ducky Boys, which is like what it's got to be one of the worst band names ever. Like there's so many things that people have to poke fun at on this. Wait, so it is, included- so the Ducky Boys is worse than Mr. Epp and the Calculations? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. It's got to be Mr. Epp and the because Mr. Epp and the Calculations sounds like it's some sort of nerdy prog band. The Ducky Boys. Sounds like someone that just can't come up with good band names. It sounds like uh, it sounds like a band that's dressed like Ducky from is that Pretty yeah. in Pink? I think of um, what was what's the character from Marvel that's the 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 
Oh, the Howard the Duck? That's really yeah. Howard the Duck. I Howard think of duck. Howard the Duck. I think of um uh Tony Clifton. Oh yeah, you know yeah. Tony Clifton? Oh yeah, yeah, in yeah. A duck yeah. Suit. I think of Tony Clifton in a duck suit. That's what I think of when I see the Ducky Boys. That would be brilliant. And I'm sure that's not what the band sounds like. Yeah, well. So anyway, and the band, the Ducky Boys, that included Stone Gossard. That band split, God forbid, in 1983. <laughs> Turner's Wikipedia page said he joined Mr. Epp in the calculations and he said that it was Mark Arm. Wait, he said that it was the worst band in the world. Yeah, well, is that Mark Arm was the one that said that they were the worst? Mark, band oh, Mark in the Arm world. was the one who said it was the yeah. He was the one that said they were the worst. So basically, there's more than a couple of people that thought they were the worst band in the world. Pretty much. <laughs> so as we're continuing on here, we're kind of going through the formation of Green River. We have Jeff Ament. He was going to college at the University of Montana in Missoula, which I had some friends that actually went to that same college, where he studied art and played basketball. Now, you might be wondering, what well, was he playing for the varsity team? Was he, you know, uh, you know, one of the Grizzlies out there? I went back and I looked at the rosters for the University of Montana in Missoula basketball team from about 1979 to 1985, and I didn't see Jeff Ament anywhere at all in any of those, uh, on any of those rosters. So... I don't believe he was on the actual like varsity team or if there was some sort of JV or if he just played rec ball. But I do know that he right. loves he loves basketball because remember, one of Pearl Jam's first names, it was Mookie Blaylock, who was a New Jersey net. That's he right. was a basketball player. That's so, right. Um, so anyway, so uh, he ended up quitting college after his second year because the school had canceled its graphic design program. So after this, he relocated to Seattle with his band deranged dragon so we're going to retitle this podcast episode worst band names in history <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering I, but <clears throat> I was wondering what you were going to say about the band yeah. names because there's there's so many at the beginning of this episode because it's all of the guys who had these bands before they ended up and they didn't and even afterwards they admitted that choosing the name and we'll get to why they named the, the band green river here in a minute but they even admitted that that was stupid, and it's just something dumb that you do when you're in your early twenties. The, the name Green River. The name or the Green River. Names. Yeah. Well. All, yeah. Well. No. Specifically, the name Green River. But obviously, we're we're judging by all these other band names. Uh, yeah. Band, not the best. band names wasn't their strong suit. It's, yeah. you, you can't be good at everything, guys. You can't be good at everything. Because <laughs> they're good at a whole hell of a lot else, man. Yeah. Because, yeah. Like you can't. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like they're we're talking about them because they're an amazing band. And we're focusing a significant amount of time on this podcast on sh on the one floor, <laughs> the one floor. At the very beginning, before Green River was formed, Turner and Arm. Turner, that sounds like a weird fucking Turner, like, and, Turner Arm. and Hooch spinoff. Yeah, Turner, Turner and Hooch. Now, just Turner and Arm. He, the dog ate the rest of him. There's just the arm left. Really, <laughs> Turner and Arm didn't really know Emmett. But they they had seen him perform and liked what they saw. In order to get to know Emmett better. Turner got a job at the same coffee shop that Emmett worked at. Now that, that's like something out of a Hallmark movie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Imagine if they made a Hallmark movie of how bands meet. By the way, have you seen the new Netflix film about the, what's the, what's the band called? The, there's a, there's a fucking new Netflix film. In, in two years, when someone comes back and watches this podcast from now, they're going to go, that was like two years ago, but it just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's called Metal Something. Oh, oh dude, you gotta see it. Oh, God, I know what you're talking about. Um, um, Tom Morello did all the music for it. And he Metal did a Lords? bunch of post promote. Metal Lords. It's a great movie. Fuck, it's a good movie. It's just like, it's the lead singer of the band. For anyone who's curious, just this is why you're going to watch it. If you're a fan of us, anyone, I was that guy. I was that guy in high school. Is, can you hear that? Is that coming through? No. It's not coming through. There's a massive fucking truck just sweeping the street right outside the window. I can hear it here. It's not coming through there. No. Seriously, dude. What the fuck is that? That's a fucking street sweeper out the fucking window. And you know what's going to happen is that this is the time that we record the episodes. So every single time gonna... we record, <laughs> that street sweeper is going to be right outside that goddamn window. Exactly but I, it's, I can't hear it, so it's not picking it up. So Okay, so... Um, but that guy, the guy who's the lead singer in the band, that was me in high school. That's how dead. That's how disgustingly dedicated and sickeningly annoying I was. Oh. I didn't care if no one liked oh, now me. Now I gotta watch. I it. was like, it's no, it's like he only cares about rock music and fucking metal, and anyone who doesn't is dead to him and beneath him. That, and that was, was me you, in huh? high school. And that was, that you. was me. Yeah. So that's as fine. we're as we're moving along here, one of the other things Sorry. that I kind of wanted to get to. 
uh, with this album or with the, with this episode specifically is, is talking with Shim about. I mean, we know we've talked about the other band names that you thought of and how you kind of had a little notepad where you would keep notes on. You know, you'd I think was um, yeah. was it was it Sonic Garden? Was that one of the yeah, ones that you Sonic had come Garden. up with? So, yeah. uh, no, but and, Sick uh, Puppies was really yeah. it, like because you started that so young. Yeah, I've only ever been in one real band. The other band, I tried to start another band after the puppies and chose the wrong people to work with and it never got off the ground. We released one song for homeless rock stars. Um, and, and then Is that I because you were a homeless doing... rock star? Yeah, I, I was by the end of that project. <laughs> um, so, so, so basically, uh, no, the sick puppies. And I, I think it's, um, it's one of those things where it's there's I, I wish I had been in other bands before I had been in sick puppies because there's a perspective that you get from having been in several bands where you go oh this this is something that works this is something that doesn't work it's like any it's like if you're dating mm -hmm. you need to date well usually you date a few people before you find someone who you're going to commit to because you go oh I don't like it when a person's like this I do like it when they're like that I need to act like this I need to act like that and if you don't have that perspective you don't you just you don't know what you don't know so these guys having been in a few bands it's really beneficial and it probably has a lot to do with why they went on to form bands that were really successful because they learned what to do and what not to do and what they and liked no, and never... what they and what they didn't like and that's something that's yeah. big i'm telling yeah. you it's going to be coming up here in episode two where there's really kind of a moment for these guys in green river where it clicks hey i like we're probably not destined to be a band here and coincidentally enough it's all wrapped around jane's addiction but that stuff we'll get to here coming up. In, nice teaser. In, nice. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, yeah I it's like, like that. I've done oh, this it's, before. It's like you, almost like you've been working in radio a couple of times before. Do, oh, do. just a few, yeah? Oh, oh my just goodness. a few, you know. By the okay. way, what was the name of that other band you were in? No One Cares. That was the name of the band. That's what we called it. No, what no was the one name of the band? Cares. No, it doesn't matter. You band? can look it up. Anyone who cares enough can look it up. Screaming and watch No One Look It Up. <laughs> All right, so Steve Turner, he was only in Green River until about mid-1985. One of the reasons that his name pops up a lot, though, is because he ended up forming Mud Honey down the road with, with Mark Arm, but we'll get to that later. He was eventually replaced by... Do you by mean Mother Love Bone? No, Mud Honey. Because you wrote, you wrote Mother Love Bone. Where? In the thing. Where did... You wrote... Just just want to make sure, because I oh, want to no, make no, sure no, no, okay, no, no, right. Steve Turner, Steve Turner eventually... <laughs> See, this is why we got to pay attention here. Steve Turner went on to form Mud Honey with Mark Arm. Now, Bruce Fairweather replaced Steve Turner in Green River. Fairweather ended up going on to become a member of Mother Love Bone. There you go. See, there you this go. is how we roll. See, but see, like, like this is what I like about this is I write up these notes and then essentially I kind of bullet point it so that Shim's to read this, I'm to read this, but we don't want Shim to read it ahead of time because some of the stuff. Yeah. I really like it to where, like, I want his natural reaction, and I, I try to find facts, and I try to find things that I know will get a reaction out of Shim, especially, you know, from his past experience, you know, in, in being in bands and stuff like that, when in reality, he doesn't read it just because he's lazy. Um, no, I, fuck off. They're going to believe that. <laughs> They're going to believe that. He, no, it, no, it's because I sent it to him just a few hours before, because That's, I tried to do yeah, as much as Notice possible. how I didn't sell you out, motherfucker. No, oh, please. <laughs> like, it matters. Uh, all right. So anyway, so Alex Vincent, that was the drummer. So he knew Steve Turner and Stone Gossard as they all went to the Northwest School in Seattle. Now, here's a quick little side note. Here's another band that we're going to have to cover at some oh, point. Dude, the presidents ahead. of the United States of America. Oh, Their drummer, band. Jason Finn, also went to the Northwest School in Seattle. And if you know anything dude. about me and if you followed me at all when I was on the morning show here in El Paso, you would know that the presidents of the United States of America, we would, I think it would be like National Peaches Day or something, and we wouldn't pre-plan it. Like, none of this stuff would be pre-planned, but it would be like National Peaches Day. So when Buzz would be going through the calendar, and he's like, and it's National Peaches Day, I'd immediately start playing Peaches. And yeah. then we would fall down this rabbit hole where we would start singing Lump, or we would start singing <laughs> Mach 5, or Kitty, and then we would always end up on Naked and Famous. And naked I effing love Naked and Famous. And Everybody I got to see to naked, naked and famous. famous. Everybody wants to be just like me. I'm naked and famous. Oh, God. And the cool thing is, with the presidency of the United States of America, I, I lived in Eugene for almost a year back in like 04 through 05. Right before I moved to Florida, I got to see them perform at what was called the Wow Hall. 
This is the woodsman oh, of the world. So I got to see them in this kind of smaller little venue. And it's one of these venues that, especially with all of these bands that we've been talking about on the history of rock, performed back in the late 80s, early 90s at the Wow Hall. And they have like a whole wall of the performances from Soundgarden, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, like Green River, all like the, uh, yeah. the Melvins, all these bands that were huge back then. And I got to tell you, if I were to ever throw a party, like you know the party that they have in old school where uh, Will Ferrell ends up naked, Snoop Dogg's performing? Yes. If I were to ever throw a party like that, I would hire the presidents of the United States of America because they were just so much fun. And it was just... It was a blast. I, I could yeah. not have thought of a better concert to have me my last concert before I moved away from Eugene. It was it was. Are amazing. they still together? I don't think so. I think I think they split. But you read this next one, and I'm going to Google that really quick. Okay. The band took their name from. The, we're going back to Green River now, by the way, guys. Just in case you're wondering. <laughs> um, the, the band took their name from the Green River Killer, who was a serial killer from Washington State, Gary Ridgeway had a series of murders throughout the 80s and 90s and wasn't captured until 2001 when DNA evidence from 1987 was linked to Ridgeway. So the band was named after a serial killer. I think that that's fantastic. Because well, God forbid it's actually named after the river in wherever the fucking Seattle. <laughs> is it Seattle? Where, you know, the green, they make a river go green well, for St. Patrick's Day, which is just the dumbest thing that's Chicago. That people can do. Chicago. Exactly. I, it, that's how little it matters. But well, that, and that's the thing is that that's one of the. Um, it's stupid. There, I'm sorry. There was, it's a stupid thing to do to make a whole river green. It's a stupid fucking thing. <laughs> that's to what do. we're still stuck on. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Okay, like, what problems do you have with St. Patrick's Day, sir? I don't have a problem with St. Patrick's Day. I have a problem with a large centralized government that decides that we're going to completely pollute an entire water source during climate change. Don't get me started, but you got me started. Fucking <laughs> like, I no, I look at it and I'm like, the river sucks already. And then you go and make it green. It's like you just and and is it supposed to is it supposed to remind or like people are going to forget that you're fucking them on taxes and that the that the city is smells and has like a horrible railway system like people are going to forget because of one green river one day and then how long does it take to get the shit out of the river and why do you put it there in the first place i know why you put it there in the first place but it doesn't inspire people to drink more it just creates more problems it's a it's a silly thing to do i want to know in the comment section are you for the green river or are you against the green river nothing to do with the band that we're talking about nothing to do with music just a fucking concept in my brain that now exists in yours you're welcome so i take it they don't <laughs> Do you guys celebrate St. Patrick's Day down there? Yeah, yeah, we do what normal motherfucking people do. We drink until we don't feel feelings. <laughs> we don't dye things green that don't need to be dyed green. We just drink until we don't feel. That's what people do. Anything else is just stupid. Just making a note of that. All right. <laughs> Uh, where were we at here? Yeah, so but that was one of the things there. Um, there was a there's a documentary on Mud Honey, and I think they they go through and and they even have you know Jeff Hayment and, and Stone Gossard in this documentary, and they're talking about kind of their days with Green River. And I think it was Stone Gossard that said that yeah, that was probably not the best idea to name a band after a serial killer. Like that's something that looking back at it now from my older age, it was like oh, that's what stupid twenty year old Stone did. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what about like um, the Brian Jonestown Massacre? There's yeah. a band that literally called themselves the Brian Jonestown Massacre, didn't they? Um, it's something like that. No, it, it's. I'm telling you, it's that. But they named it after a massacre. After the massacre, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. So like, you're all for it. So you're pro massacres no, I'm not and serial for it. killers. Look at that. Shim hates Alice in Chains. He hates Green Rivers, <laughs> and he loves serial killers. We are finding oh out God. so I much about love... you, my man. Wow. No, here's the thing. I understand why people... Well, I'm not going to... We're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go down that path? Hole. All right, all right. Well, I'll go on <laughs> to the next one path. here. Uh, so I kill people. <laughs> one of us is going down. Down to the river. All right, so Vincent, who was the drummer, <laughs> when talking about the formation of the band, that he said, quote, we knew we wanted Amen. Stone was in another band with Jonathan Evison called March of Crimes. Again, another band name we're throwing out there. We yeah, should. So when we put this up on Spotify, 
Which we band name up, is the worst? Let's do uh, a yeah. poll. What's That's the what I was going to do. I was going to put up a poll and say which one, like which uh, of all the band names that we we're mentioning in these uh, in these episodes about Green River are the worst. Which one's the worst one? Which, by the way, make sure that you go back and you do vote in the poll for Alice in Chains songs because we're going to pick three that are going to make it into the podcast. Or and, I'm sorry, into the playlist on Spotify. So we need to know which one. And I couldn't pick. I mean, it was Roosters, Them Bones, Angry Chair, Wood. Like, there was too many. And and this too is even with Shim songs. saying like really you can take good. all of my like you can take all of them because yeah. Shim had no real opinion either way. Yeah. Because I hate Alice in Chains. Because he ha- hates Alice in Chains, and he also lacks opinions. If there's anything you've known about Shim, he just doesn't have any opinions whatsoever. He's just this kind of just wishy washy gelatinous yeah. blob. That's just yeah. kind of there, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, we I all could know literally watch. I could literally watch an entire city just paint their entire river green and not say a thing. <laughs> Nothing, no opinion. All right. So anyway, no so he was in this. So Stone was in this other band with Jonathan, Jonathan Evison called March of Crimes, and this is the quote from Vincent. He says, "Stone got fired, and we picked him up before we recorded the first demo." Now, the reason Jonathan Evison's name comes up is he is now a kind of renowned author. He's won multiple awards for his works, which include All About Lulu, West of Here, The Revised Fundamentals of Caregiving, and This Is Your Life, Harriet Chance. You know, the funny thing is the titles of his books are better than the titles of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe they should have gone with that. when they, I mean, I All like About Lulu revised- would be a great band name, right? The, the, all About Lulu would be a great, like, punk pop or like no like one of those grimy punk bands that's like an all-girl band yeah. all about lulu uh but, West the, of but there. the lead singer would have to change her name to lulu right yeah fine deal with it the ramones did it you can do it bitch um <laughs> west of here i like west how you of- call this imaginary human being that doesn't even <laughs> exist bitch <laughs> bitch west of here is a country western band the revised fundamentals of caring would be great for like a prog death metal band <laughs> yeah <laughs> imagine that and this is your life, Harriet Chance. That sounds like a band name from a band that doesn't know who they are yet. I was going to say that one actually sounds more like a like a debut album. Yeah, this is like your climbing life, up Harriet, the charts. Here Harriet we've got Chance. the latest from uh, All About Lulu off of their debut album. This is your life, Harriet Chance. We're going to <laughs> west of here. That actually does work. You fuck. That works really well. <laughs> and do you like my top 40 pukey voice as well, by the way? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Hey, coming down here on the top that's, 40. That's what your avatar should be. That's what, when when you get around to being able to talk about that, that's what your avatar, that's the sound of your avatar for 60 Oh, yeah. It, oh, no. If anybody wants, go to my Instagram page. Go to at the real Brandalorian because um, the, I, I'm trying to, uh, like, my wife is having me help my mother-in-law uh, kind of like cook healthier foods, like more heart healthy foods and things like Isn't that. Isn't that and a I nice cook. way to put it? It's a lovely way to put it. What? My wife is having me help as opposed to I'm helping. Okay, I'm helping. My wife is having me help. My but anyway, grandmother. Okay, so I'm helping my mother in law um, with 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 some of the ingredients and things like that. She's Just cooking. Edit with. that bit out. Yeah. And <laughs> one of them is hemp seeds. Hemp seeds are really good for you, and you can kind of put it yeah. in anything. So I told my wife, I was like, we need to, you know, get your mom to, to buy some of this stuff. So we filmed a real, she was like, you need to, A, I need to say it in Spanish because my mother-in-law only speaks Spanish. And uh, my wife was like, do your radio voice. So I kind of did my Spanish radio voice like this. And um, I kind of, I, I've speak already. Spanish? It's very limited. It's very limited. Right. I mean, I'm learning it. And when I'm around the family, right. I pick up on a lot more. But if you want to go to my Instagram page, I did a reel where I did this kind of like phony little 10 second commercial. But it, it, I say in Spanish, you need to buy this is what it is. But I do it in my Spanish radio voice, kind of like this. De comprar. That means to uh, uh, comprar, to buy. Hi, you need to buy. I don't know why I became Dracula. I don't know. God damn it. Go to the next one. Blah. Blah. I did one Blah. hemp seed. Ah, ah, ah. Two hemp seeds. Ah, ah, ah. The band's first record was Come On Down, which was recorded in December 1984. Love that year. It's a good year for all things prophetic. By mid-1985, see what I did there? By mid-1985, the band had finished the album, but Turner had left the group, citing his distaste with the band's heavy metal leanings. Mm. Would you really call them heavy metal leanings? Well, I mean, it, it's this is something, this is kind of going to be 
Something we cover in the next episode here with Green River is where we're going to be talking about really what happened to the band. And how, like Shim was saying, he wishes that he would have been in a band before um, Sick Puppies. So you can kind of, you learn this doesn't work, you learn this works and stuff like that. And that's really what happened here with Green River is that you had these guys who knew they were all talented. They all knew what they were bringing to the table. And so that's what they did when they formed the band. But then after a while, they realized we're kind of going in two different directions here. And that was ultimately yeah. what the split was. But that's going to be coming up in the next episode. Now, speaking of that, it was an EP really is what it was with Come On Down. The band, went, they went on a nationwide tour to promote the album. But the problem is the album got delayed. So it negated the purpose of the tour. However... They did make some great connections when they were on that tour, including Sonic Youth. That's another band that we're going to have to cover here at some point with how influential they were. And who it was uh, Kurt Cobain. We were talking about Nirvana, right? When he was talking yeah. about how they were the ones that really introduced him properly into the music industry. And this is mm -hmm. the stuff that you need to look for. This is who you should probably work with. Look for these things for the people that you want to work with or you don't want to work with and things God, like that. that is so... That that is so helpful. If you can talk to a band that way, just just having one conversation with someone who tells you, do this, don't do that, from someone who's been there, because otherwise it's fucking insane. That's, that's one of the reasons why it'd be good to be in a band a couple of times before you start your real band. I tell people all the time, like just play with everyone, start bands, do stuff, find out what works and what doesn't. Yeah, instead of I mean getting, that's because I, 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 I believe. <laughs> Uh, one or two of the members of Sonic Youth. Yeah, you uh, have you heard of Third Secret? No. Um, it's the new band. Um, that's that's got um, Chris Novoselic in it. Oh yeah, it's Chris. It's three. It's the guitar player from. Uh, wait, Soundgarden's guitar player Kim, right? Yeah, yeah it's got Kim Thiel in it as well. And then who's the drummer? <sighs> See, I, I haven't done enough research to really. <laughs> Because um, I, I, like I was, I honestly, I thought about doing, I thought about doing an episode on them, and I could have sworn that it had somebody from Sonic Youth in it, but I, I think I'm mistaken on that because it says here, <laughs> it's just Associated Acts, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Giants in the Trees, Hater, and Void. Um, but I could have sworn that it was somebody from Sonic Youth. I guess I think I just tied those two together because of the 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 ties with what we've been doing with the yeah. history of rock, talking about grunge. <clears throat> And then this, and, and and I listened to it. Third Secret's great. You can check it out on Spotify now. Um, but it's 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 a brilliant band. Um, all right, um, so where so, were, where so were we left at? Said, you said that they quoted "Come on Down" in their own composition. Never mind. Yes. So it was um, they they quoted it, and it's but the song is called "Never Mind." What was it anyway? And I believe that that song "Never Mind." What was it anyway? Was all about this time when somebody had stolen the, all of the band's instruments and some like priceless memorabilia. And stuff that they had. And the, the song was about that happening, essentially. Because mm. my first thought was, well, the song was called Nevermind. What was it anyway? I wonder if they're talking about Nirvana's Nevermind. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't, or I don't think Nirvana that took that. <coughs> no, because I believe this but, came out post uh, Nirvana's Nevermind. Right. But after the tour, going back to the sheet, after the tour, the album was finally released, but to little fanfare and it didn't sell well. Hmm, I wonder what that feels like. However, it is considered to be the first record released by a grunge yeah. band as it predated both the Melvin's debut EP and the Deep Six compilation. Hmm. Interesting. All right. And this will be the last fact that we're going to be able to get to here for this episode. But it says they started to, to gain... I have a question for you when we're done, when you finish that. Go. All right. Final one here. They started to gain a bigger following as they played through the Pacific Northwest and then it was in 1986, the Deep Six compilation was released. This is something that we've talked about a lot. It was Sub Pop, the record label that released um, the Deep Six compilation. You also had Soundgarden on there. The Melvins were on there. Malfunction, which was Andrew Wood's band before Mother Love Bone was on there. I think the, oh gosh, was it in the Human and Skin Yard, if I'm remembering correctly. I think that those were, I, that was off the top of my head, by the way. So I might have been wrong. Um, if I wasn't wrong, fuck yeah. If I was wrong, eh. Tell us in the comments section and help the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come come argue with me more about fucking Jane's addiction. But um, so it was uh, the Deep Six compilation. That's when it was released in 86. So Kathleen C. Fennessy of All Music said that the compilation, quote, documents a formative period in Northwest rock history, unquote. In reality, it really documents a formative peri uh, period in rock history, period. 
not just the Northwest. Because if you think about that Deep Six compilation, that really led to a lot of the stuff that was the late 80s, early 90s kind of grunge movement. 100%. All right, so you're going to ask a question before I started. Have you ever rolled your eyelids? What? Have you ever turned your eyelids inside out? No, I could never do it. I could never do it. Why? Are you going to want me to do it? it? I did it by accident yesterday. And I fucking This is what's going out. on in your head while we're recording yeah. well, this? Well, I mean, what else am I supposed to do while you're talking? Jesus Christ. What else is there to think about? I, well, next time, try to... <laughs> don't do it on... No, don't do it on purpose on the camera. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I never could like do a it. Kid. You sounded like a kid who's trying to fold a paper airplane and ruins it. Ah! Now, either that or the kid that's doing it too fast and gets a paper cut. Um, no, I'm serious. I was in the bath last night, and I don't really take baths. And I was there, and I, I, my face is wet, my hands wet, and I went and I did that thing where like you rub your face, and then I did that thing with your eyes. Yeah. And when I pulled my fingers away, my fucking eyelid was inside out, and I was like, "What did I do? What did I do?" And I like the top I, one was like flip. That's what you're talking no, about. No, right? it was no, it was. In, it was an innie. Oh, so my eyelashes the were on other the way. Ah. And I was like, and I and I and I tried to fix it, and it wasn't getting fixed. And I tried to gently rub it, and then I was like, if I go too hard, do I hurt myself? I I was really. And <laughs> if I, I go I was too worried. hard, is my eyeball gonna pop no, out? No, but of I the remember socket? thinking, yeah, I seriously, dude, I had a moment where I was like, if I push in the wrong way to try to get the eyelid, does the eye does the eyeball pop out because the eyelid keeps the eyeball in? You know what I mean? Like, no, does, no, does the top I, yeah. part pop? Out? And I was like, I, I, I sat there and I just sat there my, for like. This is my impression of Shim. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I sounded close to that. But I was, I'm sit, I was sitting there doing this thing where you're like, and you're just trying not to freak out. And you're like, oh, fuck, fuck. How does it go back? I've never done it. I don't know how it got in, so I don't know how to get it out. That's what she said. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was it. I just thought that'd be a fun little well, bit of did you ever, one of the thing, Did you ever have the kids that would intentionally flip oh, yeah. them? Like I the other try. way, so so they I wanted they're, to so, be those. I wanted to be those kids. I wanted to be able to do it, and I, I didn't could. want to be the guy who, later in life sitting in the bath that does it by accident and freaks out that his eyeball is going to fall out of the socket. I didn't want to be that. I want to be the first one. Well, but the no, kid but that like, does it to freak no, but there out. was the kids. It wasn't. It would fold in, but they could actually. They'd flip it out. Yeah. Like those ones. Yeah, they'd flip I, it there's out, one kid, and then they'd walk around going good. Yeah, no, and there was. I mean, I remember there's one kid. He could do it. Not even using his hands. But yeah. Just by just by what by here just, just kind of pop them like this, and then they would <laughs> and they would pop and like, like that. And it's like what the hell is going on with this kid? Jesus! Okay, no, I was the dude. kid. I was the kid that could wiggle my ears and wiggle each ear like one at a time. Oh, like I was that yeah. guy. Yeah, that was my. That was I was my the guy that wrote hits. I, I was the I, I was the guy that wrote hit songs. Add a kid. Add a when kid. you were a kid, right. mm, are you sure about that? Yeah, just because right, really no one quick. heard them doesn't mean they weren't hits. Final note here before we get to the, uh, <laughs> we wrap up this episode. So I bought this uh, Rolling Stone rock trivia like daily calendar, thinking like, ooh, this is something I could incorporate into the History of Rock podcast. It has been highly underwhelming as we are now May 2nd, and I'm just now getting to the first one that has even relatively seemed relevant. Um, there's been a few that I'm keeping for some other things, but this was the one that came up over this past weekend. It said, which 90s indie label sold t-shirts displaying the phrase, what part of we have no money, don't you understand? And the <laughs> options are Matador, Sub Pop, Merge, and Amphetamine Reptile. And of course, the answer is Sub Pop. Sub Pop? It's yeah, Sub Pop. Sub Pop. Yeah, okay. the, the, the one that we've been talking about this whole time that was really the, kind I of the forefront of I think it's hilarious that like, Sub Pop is the record label. The record label pays the bands and pays for the albums to be created and made. And they make t-shirts that said, what part of we don't have any money don't you understand? Which, if they wear the shirt, it's bad rep for them. If they hand it to their bands, they're basically saying, by the way, we intend for you to make no money. We expect that that's what's gonna happen. So well, we're gonna for a record label. Well, and the interesting thing is we're gonna be getting uh, it, more into that in the next episode when we're finishing up here with Green River. Because, of course, we're going to talk about the Jane's Addiction connection. We're going to talk about <laughs> sort of why the band split. We're going to cover Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And also, that the fact that at one point... Um, so this first album, Come On Down, was not on the Sub Pop label. Their second EP was. And, again, it was delayed because they didn't have any money to, 
to actually put towards put towards the <laughs> album and to get the album made for a so, fucking label that had no money and no sense they did quite well uh, yeah yeah um, and actually if you go back um on hulu there's the show called dark side of the 90s and they cover like a different topic there's one really great one that they do that's, that covers the viper room in Los Angeles, which was uh, notorious because obviously it was a place that Johnny Depp had purchased, and it was where celebrities felt safe to kind of go be themselves. But it was also the place where River Phoenix died, like right outside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then there's a whole episode on grunge, and they, of course, the guys from Sub Pop, like Bruce Pavitt and everybody else that was involved, they're very heavily in there. And he would describe frequently about how like we didn't have <laughs> we didn't have money, and even yeah. later on, and as the grunge movement sort of died down. Ultimately, what happened is this this little label from Seattle that was supposed to be like, you know, we're against the big guys and we're going to do this. They sold to major label was essentially yeah, what yeah. happened. Wow. So, no but all that, that stuff coming. is coming up on the next episode and Shim right. will hopefully have the guitars and everything set up for the next one. Yes, I do yes. kind of like the window set up. So if we could just leave the window there, but we'll pan out a little bit and we can put some lights around the frame of the window and that would look magical. Are you being serious right now? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> no, but the one... Oh, crap. Right before we go, too. One of the other things, too, is that we kind of put... You'll notice Shim's at a bit of an angle. Well, the first time that we, we connected on the Zoom meeting here, it was stretched, too, so it literally looked like a grunge video. Yeah. And uh, we were trying to keep it, and we ultimately it kind of went away, but it was... Remember how they would, like, distort the yeah. um, the camera? Lens? That's what Shim'd yeah. originally uh, looked like before we started. We can go back to that for the next one. Yes. We can try to. We will. All right. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching the History of Rock podcast. Go to His our name social. is Brandon. He's the DJ. I'm the DJ. His name's DJ. Shim. Hey, he's the rock star. Go to our socials. Check out Shim on Twitch. Check out Shim Instagram. Myself on Instagram at the Real Brandalorian. You can find Shim at Shim Music. But that's it. Class dismissed. Class dismissed. I don't think I ever said right, classes in session.